Do you remember way back when, in the simpler times, when you'd go and interview for a company and they'd say, can you use a computer? And you'd say, I've written a few programs. And they'd say, oh, but can you do a mail merge? Because mail merges are really hard. And I thought, let's do one in flow. So mail merge used to be one of those things that they'd always ask you to do in a job interview if you were going to do anything with a computer. Um, and I thought it would be an idea to see if we could tackle that in flow. Now, when I first approached this problem, uh, I came at it overthinking the, the, the solution way too much. I had um, parallel flows, I had flipping um, counters to try and put stuff into three buckets to lay out labels on a page, all that kind of stuff. Um, it was a nightmare. And I lost a bit of sleep over it, and I came back fresh the next day, and I thought, you know what, I'm just overthinking this. Um, Word's probably got a solution, so let's have a look and see what Word can do um, to simplify my flow. So, what we're going to use is the Word connector, and we're going to use the populate a Word document. Now, to do that, you need to use uh, a little form control that are uh, baked into Word, but there's a new feature that came out, as far as I'm aware it's new anyway, um, which is the use of tabular data uh, in Word, so repeating content um, in the flow. So, without further ado, let's get started. So before we do anything, we're going to set up our Word document. And the trick here is to con um, Word into thinking that it's a mail merge. And to do that, we're going to um, have a layout with um, some columns, right? So we need to put um, three columns in. So now we've got our three lovely um, cards that we can populate with data. Um, so the next thing we need to do is to insert a table. We want a single celled table um, and then we're going to put some repeating content inside that table right um, so let's do that so to get our repeating content we need to have the developer tab turned on in word and to do that uh, you can do that through the file tab and modify in the ribbon if you can't get to it okay so inside here we're going to put some controls so we can't use the rich text control because that just won't work. So we have to use this little jiggity jaggedy one, which is plain text content control. So we'll have one of those and we'll turn on um, design mode so we can see things properly. And we've got this properties box and we'll call that the name, right? So that's going to be where we put name of the person that we're going to do the, uh, the address label to. And then after that one, we will have another one and we'll call that the street, property street. Copy and paste that down to the um, tag, just to be on the safe side. And then we'll have another one, and that will be our postcode. Right? So, we'll say properties, postcode. Get right with our naming convention, postcode. Right, so, we'll get rid of the text in between it, but just in terms of a placeholder, we can actually just say postcode. Um, if you colour the text now, that's the colour of the text that it will come out when it's done. So you might want to go ahead and do that now to put some formatting around it. Street and then name. So the next trick in this um, in this pattern is to add some repeating content, right? So let's put some uh, carriage returns in there, make sure that's right. So we'll just do this as a basic thing. So let's do some repeating content. So select all of that and then come back to developer and there's a button here called repeating section content control um, and if you click that whatever's inside it will be repeated now you can use this to do um, invoices and tabular data and all that kind of stuff so whatever you put inside here it's going to be repeated over and over again which is super super cool so inside here we now we've now got these two additional dots on either side. They're a bit fiddle-faddly to select, but if you grab them and hit properties, you can call that table. And if you've not selected it right, you'll end up with this sort of like mad big um, list down the side and you'll know that it's not right because it will look like this, right? So if you've got that, that's wrong. You want to actually select that and, uh, and hit properties on it and it will come up with this other control, right? So there's a few other bits and pieces we need to do to get this to work properly um, and not be rubbish. 
So one of those is actually setting up the table properly. Um, so to set the table up properly, right click and go to table properties. And then inside here, you probably want to apply some borders and shading so that you don't end up with um, really heavy borders that when you cut it out, you can see. So we'll just make those very faint. And then some options. We need to allow spacing between cells. So we've got some clearance between each kind of um, label, as it were. So we'll give that 0.2 centimeters. We don't want to automatically resize to fit contents because if we're printing this on labels, um, we don't want that size to change so we need that to be fixed and then if we come to row we can actually specify the height as well so set that to exactly whatever your um, requirements are for your label so if we say according to the side here it's about two and two and a bit centimeters so we'll just make so that's about the two centimeters and the other thing that we need to turn off is allow rows to break across pages because that will mean that you end up with Half a, half a cell at the end of each column and that's not what you want at all. So now we've got this rather nifty little um, thing and that's going to repeat um, all the way down the screen. Um, probably a good idea to make things a little bit smaller because Word always seems to go with the biggest text known to man. And now we're ready. So if we save that document um, to our OneDrive we can get into Flow and, uh, and see what happens. So we're going to create an instant flow from Palanc, and we'll call it Mail Merge. And uh, we've got our manual trigger there. Um, so we'll add the uh, Word connector to populate a Microsoft Word template. And uh, I'm going to pick Documents and General mail merge now I've got my name, my street and my postcode now at the moment it's asking me for one of these each so every time I hit add new item I'd have to populate this manually and what would be the point in doing that however there is a better way so let's go through that so I have got um, a common data service entity of um, addresses right? so let's have a look at that so this and we will say we want to list some records and the thing we want to list is in my environment so and we it's called mail merges there we go mail merges um, for testing I've got about 500 in here if we just grab the first 10 that's probably going to make the whole thing run a bit faster whilst we're testing. So to get your to get these into here, there's a problem. Um, what we need to do is we need to we need to pass in an array. And to do that, if we click this little kind of switch to input entire array, we pop that on there, right? We can make a select statement up here, and if we name these as um, the select statement um, key names they will map automatically to all of the things in here so it's a really nice way of doing it and you can kind of see the data as it goes through there might be a, a step this might be a step too many but it's the way I did it and um, I quite liked it because it gave me a little kind of debug window to to play with right so I've got what comes out of list records and I'm going to say I want the name which would be this which will be the name um, which is the first name and I think we'll probably space and have surname in there too yeah, surname there and then we're going to have the street and notice I'm naming these exactly the same as down here the street so if we go for street and then we're going to have post code post code post code oh one of those and that boys and girls should just about do it so all we have to do now is pop that select statement in here and obviously we're going to call this uh, be good good flowers and say list mail merges select 
data for word and then that kind of says what it does on the tin there and we will have a new step which will be to uh, send that to me um, and we'll say we'll have that as a uh, send an email My email address in there, and we'll call that test email. email test email, and uh, the body will be test. And now we just need some advanced options, and in our advanced options, we're going to call this uh, document test, and you need to put the document extension on the end, and you pop the contents of the populate Microsoft. Word template into the attachment contents and it is as simple as that. Now we've got flows telling us so we've not got any errors. Fingers crossed. Well, it seems to work so we should be expecting an email anytime soon. And we have an email, finally. So let's have a look, see what we got, see if it did the job. Drum roll, please. And there we go. So we've got uh, nicely laid out address labels all the way down the page. Now, just to run a further test, and we'll see about turning this up to 500 and seeing what happens. So let's take the gloves off of the top count. Now we've done a test, and we'll see how this handles 500 entries. Here we go. Let's see how long this takes to process. Look how quick that was. Let's see if it worked. We've got another email, and if we click on it, let's have a little look inside of our document. And look, we've got a whole bunch of address labels, all 500 of them. Not bad, eh? So, mail merge made easy. Now, I kind of like this because I think to myself, there's some real potential for this um, with printing off labels and stuff. But for me this is super cool because there's a whole bunch of times when your ERP system is normally kind of locked away behind the scenes. But Flow exposes that, drags that amazing stuff out of the CDS or SQL or whatever um, system you've got your tablet data in and bungs it straight into a Word document that you can print out and touch and stick labels on stuff. Um, we've seen it time and time again where we actually need to have things in the real world. Not everything is digital just yet. So here's a great stopgap between the two. Um, so go and play, see what you can do. Um, I've got a funny feeling that you could uh, print whole envelopes with this with the right document setup. It doesn't have to be for tables, it can be any repeating thing. So just go and have fun with it and see how you go.